Yeah, okay. Or equipment uh, lifetime. So appliance lifetimes are usually modeled by exponentials sometimes. Why? If you, uh, this random variable has memoryless property. What does that mean? So, The, let x represent the lifetime of any n appliance or whatever. So memoryless means if it has survived up to here, oh, so obviously the equipment is, in other words, the equipment is operational at this point. So uh, what is the probability that uh, survive? So this is given. Obviously, if you're, if I'm talking, I am. I am alive today, right? I am not dead because I am so... Uh, if you have survived up to here, what is the probability that it will survive another uh, uh, duration t? So... Also, this may not be true. So what I'm trying to say is, I'm going to show that the probability of survival is, me is a memoryless process, uh, a memoryless event if the lifetime, uh, lifetime is after all a random variable, right? No, no, no one, none of us have any idea when we are going to uh, uh, collapse, right? Uh, so if, but if you assume that the lifetime follows an exponential law, I, it is true, sometimes, uh, Oh, did you switch it off? Or? Okay, that's me. Yeah, what was the question? Sometimes exponential people write like this. Yeah, that, that was the question. So, so, right, right. So sometimes, uh, so remember, it's uh, so you can also write this as uh, like this, and except with the understanding that your lambda is my mu, x one over mu, right? So either one is uh, fine. And uh, which one to use, uh, just to make it clear which, which way you write, because it's one and the same, right? One person is using lambda, other person is using one over lambda. Mu is one over lambda. So, uh, it's like frequency and time, right? Time is, frequency is one over t, right? With t period, right? So we, both are equivalent representation. Now your question is, which one should you use? Yeah, so how can we so remember, it's like, as I said, this is saying that frequency is uh, 100 hertz. It's the same as saying period is 0.01, right? Which one is right? So what's the lambda represents? All right, that, that, I'll come uh, to that. So what it represents, uh, give me one more week. All right. Then we will see it's a physical meaning. So the whole point is exponential has one parameter. You can write it either way. Let me explain to you what the memoryless property is. Last person on the phone, you are looking at somewhere else. So what this says is, what is the probability that I will survive? Look at here. Given that I have survived up to here, what is the probability that the equipment will survive another t years? That's what the question is. So what is the probability that the equipment will be live for this, given that it has survived up to here? So I'm going to compute this probability for you. So you call this to be A, call this to be B. So this is equal to what? Probability of anybody? All 
open. So this is what is a, a so look at a. A says x is so here is t naught, here is t naught plus uh, t. So what is b? Anybody? B is what? X naught greater than t naught. So that's this. This is b. Where is a? X is greater than t naught plus t, which is this region. So uh, their intersection gives you what? Anybody? Huh? Is the same as what? Anyone? Look at the picture. What? Uh, that's, uh, that is what? T A. T A, right. T naught plus T, right? So that's so this is the same as probability of x greater than T naught plus T divided by x greater than T naught. Now let's compute the distribution function for this. So that's going to be, so we want probability of x greater than T naught. So that's going to be t naught to infinity, one over lambda. I'll use the one over lambda, x over lambda. So that's what is it? One over lambda e raised to minus x over lambda minus. <coughs> so lambda cancels t naught to infinity. So this is e raised to minus t naught over lambda. Right? So let me substitute it here. So this will be e raised to minus t naught plus t over lambda over e raised to minus t naught over lambda. So what does it mean? Look, the, the present has no bearing. It has no memory how far. It might have lived 10 years already. So if this is true, it doesn't matter how far the equipment, how old the equipment is. It has no bearing in how much more it is. It is certainly not true about us. I mean, uh, right? The fact that you guys have only lived 20 years, that gives you more likelihood that you will live another 60 years. Uh, doesn't, it's not true in my case, right? So, but so our, so our lifetimes, of course, don't follow exponential law. But some equipments might. You may have a certain fan which is already 10 years old, then you'll say it's going to die, and then it may very well live for another 10 years. Right? So, so if there are uh, situations, if you say uh, uh, that something follows exponential, you are implicitly saying that that lifetime is or uh, has no memory. So if you say that is false, then your original assumption is false. In any case, the exponential has uh, uh, the survival is memoryless. Memoryless means it has no idea about the past. It doesn't know that it has already survived. This T naught doesn't come into the final expression, right? Uh, I have a question. Uh, so, in the first part, when we calculated the uh, probability, uh, like, in the T zero, cos T, but shouldn't it be supposed to be less standard and bigger than T zero from the current moment up to the next? Five years, let's say. No, I mean, what is the probability no, that we are taking to the infinity, like uh, up to the infinity, but we have to limit it, no? That's what I understand from there. But we have to. No. Uh, so, what is it? What is the probability that it will survive in five years from yeah. right? No, no, no. What is the probability? It all depends on the wording. What is the probability that it will survive uh, at least to five years? Is it? No. Like. No. Next five, next five years. Yeah, next five years, right. That is, that means it's only going to die beyond that, right? Yeah, yeah. after that. So, yeah, so that's what I wrote. Is probability that the, so x is like the, x is like the survival. So x, in other words, if the machine will collapse. The lifetime is going to be, uh, 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 lifetime is going to, so what were you saying? Um, my concern is that why we are like interested in after the five years, where we have to... Well, play. hold on. So that's the same, remember, so you can... Uh, what does this mean? This means the uh, x is greater than t means whatever is this random variable uh, that occurs, if it represents the, li uh, the lifetimes, the survival period, that's beyond the t. Yeah. That means it, it uh, survives at least the t naught, right? Yeah. This means the machine survives. Isn't it true? I'm not going to spend any more time. It's already to survives. Uh, 
So our lifetime is at least T naught, right? That's what this means. So I think you should be able to figure this out. So in any case, you understand the, the whole idea is that, this, look at here, this expression has T naught all over. But the, the answer turned out to be, remember, the answer turned out to be E raised to minus T. There is no T naught here. That means uh, whatever, we, uh, whatever we are computing has nothing to do with the T naught. It's a free of that. That's what. But T naught is the fact that machine has survived up to now. And that means this, uh, this probability has nothing to do with that. It doesn't matter whether machine survived one year or 10 years. Uh, the probability that your washing machine will live for another five years is uh, it only depends on that five years. But if you say, look, that's not true, then that means your assumption is not right. That's all I'm trying to say. OK, let me move on. This is an interesting property of uh, exponential random variable. Every random variable has a physical meaning. I, gave, I already gave you about binomial and This is Poisson, right? Remember, Poisson is a rare event. It's about arrivals. Uh, probability of x equal to k is e raised to minus lambda lambda k over k effect. So let me, let's look at this example. Let's say the parameter is again Poisson, except the parameter also depends on t. We will, of course, uh, do this in more detail next, week, next uh, after the midterm, when we do the stochastic processes. But I can make a connection. So in other words, you assume instead of lambda, it is uh, mu t. And uh, so the question is, uh, so what this means is that things are arriving, right? So this is the first arrival. Uh, this is the second arrival, third arrival. Remember, things are arriving at random. You remember this one, this is a rare event, right? Because p tends to 0, n tends to infinity in, uh, in binomial. I showed you last time, right? You push the limit. Uh, uh, so we have some epoch, some, somewhere we are starting. Uh, so this is, what would you call this? Anybody? This random variable. Huh? Well, I mean, look at the picture. The first arrival, second arrival, third arrival. So what would, this duration is called what? Huh? What did they say? Waiting time for what? Waiting time to the, for your bus. Or whatever. So the first arrival. So this is the, yeah. You can call it waiting time, or time. So that's the time to first arrival. Is that a random variable? Think physically. If things are arriving random, this is of course. Uh, you don't know when this is going to happen. If you stand there, you have no idea when the next bus is going to come. I mean, you have an idea, but you can't precisely say it will be here at. 10.57 because of traffic, this and that, uh, it's going to come, etc. So if it's a random variable, let's find out it's a distribution function. So what we want is uh, tau, let's say, what is the probability that tau is less than or equal to t? So that's the answer. So that's the probability that uh, tau less than or equal to t. This is what we want to find out. Because if I can find out, I can take its density function and find the density function and see whether. So remember, we are trying to characterize the uh, time to first arrival. So the time you are going to, if your marriage is a Poisson process, so the time to first marriage, I guess. So anyway, so this will be 
So this is the function we want to write. But we know that uh, this is true, right? Why is that true, anyone? Because tau is a random variable. Tau less than t plus tau greater than t is the union is one, right? So that is true. But this has physical meaning. Read it what it says. This says what is the probability that the first arrival is beyond t. That means how many arrivals will be there in 0 to t? So if saying that the first arrival is beyond t, is the same as saying that uh, the number of arrivals in 0 to t is uh, 0. So this is the same as saying that, remember, x represents the number of arrivals in 0 to t, the x equal to 0. So if it is, uh, here this will be, instead of lambda, I'm going to put a mu t, right? No, oh, that's the problem we are discussing. So if you put k equal to 0, you get this to be 1 minus e raised to minus mu t. So that's the dist that is uh, this one, distribution function. So it's derivative is, uh, we take the derivative of f tau tau. So that's going to be the derivative of that function. That's mu e raised to minus mu. What does this look like, the last line? Anyone? Exponential. So you have a theorem now. Uh, the theorem is if the arrivals are Poisson with the parameter which is proportional to time, <coughs> then the time to first arrival, which is a random variable, uh, is an exponential distributed. Uh, this is an exponential distributed random variable. Later we will show this is exponential, this is exponential. Exponential plus exponential will show it is gamma, so this is gamma, etc. So everything is tied up, all this stuff. We, yes, um, this is mostly queuing theory. So let me move on to today's topic. This is just to, in other words, if I draw a picture, it is a meaning, right? That's what I wanted to show you. So those of you, you know, you can write it in terms of mu or 1 over mu. Either way is fine. Any questions before I erase all this stuff? Uh, so here, just to make clear, what I'm trying to say is that uh, this problem, what it says is if I take some duration, uh, whatever is happening is po Poisson with parameter proportional to t. So wherever the t is, if the t is this much, the parameter will increase. So in fact, uh, a, pros, a random variable with this property is a Poisson process, which we will discuss, as I said, uh, in the next half. Uh, but the only reason I sort of threw it now is to show you the connection between Poisson and uh, exponential. So the arrival durations follow exponential random variable. All right, so most of you as electrical engineers, I assume, uh, we want to sort of uh, see uh, we, any signal that comes in, we do some sort of processing, signal processing, right? One way or the other way, data manipulation. Uh, so the question is, uh, if it is coming with a certain probability density function, what happens after a transformation? So what we want to study today, and that will be the homework for you to practice. This homework is not easy in the sense it takes time. So please uh, spend some time, because each problem is sort of designed to make you understand. So Sushant, you can start something new if you want.